Well, good morning. Welcome to another daily Bible reading. Let me go ahead and open us up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have in your word. I thank you for your word and the opportunity to grow. I pray that by the power of your spirit, we would grow in our knowledge and our understanding of your will and purpose for us. And we pray that you be glorified by the result. And we pray these things in the name of your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. So as we take a look at our passage for this morning, we are taking a look at Nehemiah chapters 7 through 9, Psalm 140, and Revelation chapter 7. And in Nehemiah chapter 7, we see the walls and the doors have been completed. Verse 1, now when the walls, when the wall was rebuilt and I had set up the doors and the gatekeepers and the singers and the Levites were appointed, then I put Hanani, my brother, and Hananiah, the commander of the fortress, in charge of Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man and feared God more than many. Then I said to them, Do not let the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot, and while they are standing guard, let them shut and bolt the doors. Also appoint guards from the inhabitants of Jerusalem, each at its post, at his post, each in front of his own house. And then we see that Nehemiah is moved to make records of the people. Verse 4, Now the city was large and spacious, but the people in it were few, and the houses were not built. Then my God put it in my heart to assemble the nobles, the officials, and the people to be enrolled by genealogies. Then I found the book of the genealogy of those who came up first, in which I found the following record. These are the people of the province who came up from the captivity of the exiles, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away, and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his city. And then from verses 7 to 60, it's really just a detailed record of those names of people. Um, I'll go ahead and just skip this and go all the way down to verse 61 after all these names are brought about. Verse 61, um, we see, and this is still part of the detailed record keeping, but we see once again attention being given to the validation process to make sure that these were true Israelites or true Levites, depending upon um, what it was um, that they were representing. Verse 61 these were they who came from Tel Mela, Tel Harsha, Cherub, Adon, and Immer, but they could not show their father's houses or their descendants whether they were of Israel. So these were people that had come with the Israelites but could not prove by any records that they were truly of Israel. The sons of Deliah, the sons of Tobiah, the sons of Nakoda, 642. Of the priests, the sons of Hobiah, the sons of Hakos, the sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite and was named after them. These searched among their ancestral registration, but it could not be located. Therefore, they were considered unclean and excluded from the priesthood. So this is in reference to those claiming to be Levites. The governor said to them that they should not eat from the most holy things until a priest arose with the Urim and Thummim. And the Urim and Thummim, I believe this was mentioned also in the book of Ezra, and this is just to say that for those who claimed to be Levites but were unable to be validated, they would wait for the priest to put on these garments that were referred to as Urim and Thummim. In fact, it was like a breastplate with multiple gems. And this is how they would seek from God um, his judgment on various matters. And then we see the total numbers, verse 66, the whole assembly together was 42,360 besides their male and their female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 245 male and female singers. Their horses were 736, their mules 245, their camels 435, their donkeys 6,720. And then we see the givings, verse 70. Some from among the heads of fathers' households gave to the work, the governor gave to the treasury 1,000 gold drachmas, 50 basins, and 530 priests' garments. Some of the heads of fathers' households gave into the treasury of the work 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,200 silver minas. That which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,000 silver minas and 67 priests' garments. Now the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, the temple servants, and all Israel lived in their cities, and when the seventh month came, the sons of Israel were in their cities. And that brings us to chapter 8, verse 1. And all the people gathered as one man at the square, which was in front of the water gate, and they asked Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. 
Then Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men, women, and all who could listen with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it before the square which was in front of the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of men and women, those who could understand, and all the people were attentive to the book of the law. So he was reading for quite a span of time from morning until midday. And they were hearing from, obviously, the book of the law, from the, the books of Moses. And verse 4, Ezra the scribe stood at the wooden podium, which they had made for the purpose. And right beside him was Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Maasiah on his right, and Padiah, Mishael, Malchijah, Hashum, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam on his left. Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands. Then they bowed low and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shebathai, Hodiah, Maaseah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Paliah, the Levites explained the law to the people while the people remained in their place. So it wasn't just a plain reading. He wasn't just reading through the verses, but we see here the work of the priest to actually explain the law to the people. In verse 8, they read from the book, from the law of God, translating to give the sense so that they understood the reading. And so Ezra was not even reading from the original language, but translating it into the tongue that they would have understood. And by this time, they were probably speaking some form of Aramaic or whatever it is that the Persians would have spoke at that time. And verse 9, then Nehemiah, um, who was the governor and Ezra, the priest and scribe and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep for all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the law and likely weeping because they realized how God had told them ahead of time to remain faithful and what would happen if they were unfaithful. So obviously weeping for that reason and they're told not to weep. Verse 10, then he said to them, go eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, send portions to him who has nothing prepared for this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people saying, be still for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. All the people went away to eat, to drink, to send portions, and to celebrate a great festival because they understood the words which had been made known to them. And then we see the next day of reading reveals the Feast of Booths. Verse 13, then on the second day, the heads of the father's households of all the people, the priests and the Levites were gathered to Ezra, the scribe that they might gain insight into the words of the law. They found written in the law how the Lord had commanded through Moses that the sons of Israel should live in booths during the feast of the seventh month. So they proclaimed and circulated a proclamation in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go out to the hills, bring olive branches and wild olive branches, myrtle branches, palm branches, and the branches of other leafy trees to make booths as it is written. So these are basically dwelling structures, temporary dwelling structures made from these materials. Um, that the Israelites had dwelled in at various points uh, during their time in wandering through the wilderness, and it is celebrated in the Feast of Booths. Uh, verse 16, so the people went out and brought them and made booth for, booths for themselves, each on his roof and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God and in the square at the water gate and in the square of the gate of Ephraim. The entire assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths and lived in them. The sons of Israel had indeed not done so from the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, to that day, and there was great rejoicing. He read from the book of the law of God daily from the first day to the last day, and they celebrated the feast seven days, and on the eighth day there was a solemn assembly according to the ordinance. And that brings us to chapter 9, verse 1, when we see the Israelites gathering together for their sins. Verse 1, now on the 24th day of this month, the sons of Israel assembled with fasting and sackcloth and with dirt upon them. The descendants of Israel separated themselves from all foreigners and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. While they stood in their place, they read from the book of the law of the Lord, their God, for a fourth of the day, and for another fourth they confessed and worshipped the Lord, their God. 
And verse 4, now on the Levites platform stood Jeshua, Bani, Kadmiel, Shebaniah, Buni, Sherebiah, Bani, and Chenani, and they cried with a loud voice to the Lord their God. Then the Levites, Jeshua, Kadmiel, Bani, Hesh, Heshabneah, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shebaniah, and Pothathiah said, Arise, bless the Lord your God forever and ever. O oh, may your glorious name be blessed and exalted above all blessings and praise. And they lift up this prayer starting in verse 6, led by the Levitical priests. And this prayer really serves as a good summary of the entire Old Testament. Starting in verse 6, You alone are the Lord. You have made the heavens, the heaven of heavens, with all of their host, the earth and all that is in it, the sea and all that is in them. You give life to all of them and the heavenly hosts, Bowed, bows down before you. You are the Lord God. You chose Abram and brought him out from Ur of the Chaldees and gave him the name Abraham. You found his heart faithful before you and made a covenant with him to give him the land of the Canaanite, of the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, the Girgashite, to give it to his descendants. And you have fulfilled your promise for you are righteous. You saw the affliction of our fathers in Egypt and heard their cry by the Red Sea. Then you perform signs and wonders against Pharaoh, against all of his servants and all the people of his land, for you knew that they acted arrogantly toward them and made a name for yourself as it is this day. You divided the sea before them, so they passed through the midst of the sea on dry ground, and their pursuers you hurled into the depths like a stone into raging waters. And with a pillar of cloud you led them by day and with a pillar of fire by night to light for them the way in which they were to go. Then when you came down on Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven, you gave them just ordinances and true laws. You gave them just ordinances, just as in righteous, uh, just ordinances and true laws, good statutes and commandments. So you made known to them your holy Sabbath and laid down for them commandments, statutes, and laws through your servant Moses. You provided bread from heaven for them for their hunger. You brought forth water from a rock for them for their thirst. And you told them to enter in order to possess the land which you swore to give them. But they, our fathers, acted arrogantly. They became stubborn and would not listen to your commandments. They refused to listen and did not remember your wondrous deeds which you had performed among them. So they became stubborn and appointed a leader to return to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, anger and abounding in loving kindness and you did not forsake them and by the way that um that that verse here especially at the end saying you are a god of forgiveness gracious and compassionate slow to anger abounding in loving kindness and you did not forsake them i mean that goes back to moses when he saw the glory of god pass before him um, much of that comes from that statement and it's repeated often in the old testament even when they made for themselves a calf of molten metal and said, this is your God who brought you up from Egypt and created and committed great blasphemies. You and your great compassion did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud did not leave them by day to guide them on their way, nor the pillar of fire by night to light for them the way in which they were to go. You gave your good spirit to instruct them, your manna you did not withhold from their mouth, and you gave them water for their thirst. Indeed, 40 years you provided for them in the wilderness, and they were not in want. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet swell. You also gave them kingdoms and peoples and allotted them to them as a boundary. They took possession of the land of Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og and the king of Bashan. You made their sons numerous as the heavens, and you brought them into the land which you had told their fathers to enter and possess. So their Sons entered and possessed the land, and you subdued before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and you gave them into their hand with their kings and the peoples of the land to do with them as they desired. They captured fortified cities and a fertile land. They took possession of houses full of every good thing, hewn cisterns, hewn cisterns, vineyards, olive groves, fruit trees in abundance. So they ate, were filled, and grew fat, and reveled in your great goodness." But they became disobedient and rebelled against you and cast your law behind their backs and killed your prophets who had admonished them so that they might return to you. 
and they committed great blasphemies. Therefore you delivered them into the hand of their oppressors and oppressed them. But when they cried to you in the time of their distress, you hurt from heaven, and according to your great compassion, you gave them deliverers who delivered them from the hand of their oppressors. But as soon as they had rest, they did evil against you. Therefore you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies, so that they ruled over them. When they cried against you, you heard from heaven, and many times you rescued them according to your compassion. These last few verses describing the what happened in the book of Judges. And admonish them in order to turn them back to your law. Yet they acted arrogantly and did not listen to your commandments, but sinned according to your ordinances, by which if a man observes them, he shall live. And they turned a stubborn soul shoulder and stiffened their neck and would not listen. However, you bore with them for many years and admonished them by your spirit through your prophets. Yet they would not give ear. Therefore, you gave them into the hands hand of the peoples of the land. And actually, this might not be, I'd have to look at this again. This might not be necessarily describing the time of the judges, though a lot of this is paralleled in judges. But it could just be talking about the time of the kingdoms, the divided kingdoms. And the reference that they had killed their prophets earlier tells me that this may be later and not necessarily the time of judges. Verse 31, nevertheless, in your great compassion, you did not make an end of them or forsake them, for you are gracious. You are a gracious and compassionate God. Now, therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, the awesome God who keeps covenant and loving kindness, do not let all the hardship seem, seem insignificant before you, which has come upon us, our kings, our princes, our priests, our prophets, our fathers, and on all your people from the days of the kings of Assyria to this day. However, you are just in all that has come upon us, for you have dealt faithfully, but we have acted wickedly. For our kings, our leaders, our priests, and our fathers have not kept your law or paid attention to your commandments and your admonitions, which you have admonished them. But they in their own kingdom, with your great goodness, which you gave them, with the broad and rich land, which you set before them, did not serve you or turn from their evil deeds. Behold, we are slaves today. And as to the land, which you gave to our fathers to eat of its fruit and its bounty, behold, we are slaves in it. Its abundant produce is for the kings whom you have set over us because of our sins. They also rule over our bodies and over our cattle as they please. So we are in great distress. Now because of all this, we are making an agreement in writing. And on the sealed documents are the names of our leaders, our Levites, and our priests. So a wonderful confession here. And it ends here with an agreement that is made a sealed document. And the next chapter will go into all the people that had signed it. But now we turn our attention to Psalm 140, and Psalm 140 starts with a call to rescue the rescue David in this case, a Psalm of David, rescue David from violent men. For the choir director, a Psalm of David, rescue me, O Lord, from evil men, preserve me from violent men, who devise evil things in their hearts, they continually stir up wars. They sharpen their tongues as a serpent, poison of a viper is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to trip up my feet. The proud have hidden a trap for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set snares for me. Selah. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear, O Lord, to the voice of my supplications. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not promote his evil device that they not be exalted, Selah. Verse 9, as for the head of those who surround me, may the mischief of their lips cover them, may burning coals fall upon them, may they be cast into the fire, into deep pits from which they cannot rise. May a slanderer not be established in the earth, may evil hunt the violent men speedily. And then verse 12, we see confidence in God's justice and righteousness. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name. The upright will dwell in your presence. And now we go to Revelation chapter 7. Remember the prior chapter, we saw the first six seals, the first six seal judgments opened up. And in Revelation 7, we have kind of this interlude before that seventh seal leads to the next set of um, judgments. 
Verse 1, after this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the wind, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, to Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. And this is where we get the 144,000. Verse 4, we read, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. From the tribes of Judah, 12,000 were sealed from the tribes, the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. And from the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. But we see it's not just these 144,000 who are worshipers of God. Going to verse 9, after these things, I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, and palm branches were in their hands. So we see a great multitude, and this is going outside the nation of Israel. We know that because it's referring to every nation, every tribe, people, and tongues. In verse 10, they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are clothed in white robes, who are they and where have they come from? And I said to them, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God. They serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. They will hunger no longer, nor thirst any more, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and will guide them to springs of the water water of life, and God will wipe away, will wipe every tear from their eyes. So we see some wonderful promises there at the end of Revelation chapter 7. That brings us to the end of our reading for this morning. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time and this uh, blessed, blessed words from your scriptures. Uh, Father, I pray that you would continue to protect the church of your son, Jesus Christ, physically and spiritually. Father, I pray that by the power of your spirit, we would continue to grow together into the image of your son. And Father, we pray that you would be glorified by that result. And Father, we give thanks to you and pray these things in the name of your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, that brings us to the end of our reading for this morning. I look forward to seeing you again, once again, tomorrow morning for our next daily Bible reading. Have a wonderful rest of the day and God bless.